I came to this country and I was told that I will have a good life here, but everything was light. He said to his mother, Mommy, you know we just bring her here for our work. She's our slave. I used to think they would kill me and no one would ever find out. I've come to the northeast to investigate how women can leave their home countries as brides to British men and end up in the UK as modern day slaves and why there's only ever been a handful of successful prosecutions. I found women still so frightened of their abusers, they asked us to disguise their identities. Many had followed family tradition in arranged marriages to British-based relatives. Shazia's troubles began on her third night in England. I was asleep and he slapped me on the face. He hit me a lot. He went to throw me down the stairs. It's the family conspiracy that makes Shazia's story even more shocking. She worked all day for nothing, sewing suits her mother-in-law sold to customers. Whatever money they had, they would keep. I didn't have anything. When I had my period, they never got me anything. I would tear up clothes and use them. Shazia was expected to do all the cooking and cleaning. Her in-laws even demanded she wash their feet and she endured regular beatings from her husband. Did his family ever stop him? No. One time I was in the conservatory. He picked up the sewing machine I was using and threw it at my head. There were people working outside. My mother-in-law said, you bastard, why didn't you take her inside and beat her? Meaning, you are beating her outside where there are witnesses. I used to think they would kill me and no one would ever find out. You couldn't see Shazia's face, but I just spent two hours with her and she was sobbing for most of it. She has a scar here and a big scar here where she says her husband pushed her over and she sliced her chin open on her bangle. She told me about being whipped. She says she has a burn mark on her arm from an iron. She was very brave to talk to us. What goes on behind closed doors is staggering. But how has it stayed so secret? Is the community complicit in keeping it hidden? And have the authorities tiptoed around the issue, allowing it to remain undetected? Do you think that the wider communities, the Pakistani community for instance, has to stand up and take more notice and be more open about it? Yes, they do need to stand up, they need to take more notice, they need to realise this is happening right here under their noses. You know, it's not something that's going to go away, it's just going to get, it's just going to get worse. The women that I've worked with, it's always the same. You know, I've come from Pakistan, I've married a first cousin or a second cousin, um, some of the relatives are their aunties or their uncles, and they're expected to be domestic slaves during the day and sex slaves on the night. Slavery is closer than you think. The Home Office is running a campaign to get people to speak out about slavery, but it can be hard to get the female victims in these kind of cases to talk. One we're calling Fazana was spied on with CCTV in her home. Also from Pakistan, she had two children with her abusive husband. He said to me, you're a prostitute, you're a slug and a bitch all the time. You come from gutter. I'm just working in a shop nine till nine o'clock and then I come back at home until 12 o'clock. I make food and clean the house. When Fazana fell pregnant again, her in-laws forced her to have an abortion. I said, please, don't do that. It's my tummy, and I born him, and I look after him. Don't do that, please. Please, I want to burn my baby. He said, no. He said, I'm going to put your hand in hot oil if you are not listening to me. And then he is making me very, very scared. He said, police coming to pick you up and send you back in Pakistan if you're not going to do abortion. 
Nobody knows how many enslaved women there are in Britain, though one lawyer here in the North East told me she alone sees up to 120 cases a year. Most are from South Asia, but the net is spreading. Pfizer came from North Africa. Did you ever try and report what was happening to you to the police? Yes, I did. I did one time. I went to the police. She gave me just five minutes. Uh, she said to me, oh, this matter, we cannot do anything for you. You have to go for the solicitor. Nobody listened. Nobody believed. Nobody wanted to help me. I was like, why it's happened that for me? I was keeping crying. I was saying, the best thing, I will go on from this life. It was like... Well, die. Yeah, because it was a really horrible situation. Deep. Mm. So sorry. I hear of many young women who are actively dissuaded from prosecuting by the police, you know, along the lines of, well, he'll have loads of witnesses and it'll just be your word against all of them, or if you want to make a clean break and get away and um, stay hidden so they can't find you, prosecuting is not the way to go about that. Um, Isn't that just realistic? I guess it is, but I have, I have also known young women who've wanted to prosecute, who've really wanted to prosecute, but have been severely dissuaded from doing so. This isn't just a problem in homes in the North East, it's happening across Britain. But are there parallels with the abuse of girls in Rotherham? Is there space for spousal slavery to flourish between community silence and the fear of offending sensitivities? White professionals who are dealing with different communities um, are frightened of getting it wrong. They're frightened of being called racist, they're frightened of being insensitive. Um, and that is what happened in Rotherham? That is what happened in Rotherham. And at the end of the day, if we turn a blind eye, we can walk away. But if we walk away, we might be the one person who that young person's spoken to. We might be condemning them to stay in that awful situation. After nine years, Shazia did walk away. She was rescued at an English class. Three years on, is she safe now? Her husband found out where she was. Uh, she's still being persecuted. Um, he's broke into a flat and basically wanted her to know, I know where you are and you're never going to get away from me. Like most of the women in her position, it's unlikely Shazia's husband and his family will ever face prosecution. Do you have a message for other women in your situation? If you put up with one thing, they will do 10 more bad things to you. Just get out, save yourselves, and don't marry your daughters off in another country.